Hey everyone, I'm Tassinix, and welcome. We're doing another video here on Set 14, a review on the new Datacron Set 14 that we are just a few days away from starting in Conquest. As of this recording, actually, today is, uh, yeah, it's even still a couple days. It is Saturday, and the new Conquest where we can build up on new, the, the new Set 14 uh, starts on Monday. So I'm joined here to make this video with uh, the very esteemed Aesop Rock, he who sits atop the GAC leaderboards. How are you today, sir? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm just coming off a win myself. I actually am fighting uh, Brilliant Randy here for the grand final of this season. Ooh, that should be fun. It is going to be a fun one. But anyways, thank you so much for joining us. I know it was a little hectic for us each to, to scrounge together the time for this, but really appreciate you, sir. So happy to be here. Yeah, yeah absolutely fabulous. Uh, all right, let's let's get into it without further ado. Uh, about set fourteen, we'll start off with the stats. So we're just going to cover the high level notes. I'm trying to keep this video fairly brief for you guys. So we're going to talk mostly about the winners. What if you if you have questions about something we specifically don't cover, feel free to ask in the comments, and we'll get right back with you about it. Uh, I certainly will. And the uh, the implication here is that if we don't specifically mention that it's a winner, it's not that it's entirely useless, it's that just don't see a lot of application. If you see something niche, if you see something that's going to work, go for it. Give it a go. That's, uh, that's the advantage with these sets is kind of take it where you want to take it. All right, so about stats. Bulk returns with max health and max protection. It's not getting handed to you for free on a level 3 like it was before. You actually are going to have to farm it up and make intelligent choices about which teams you want to actually stack bulk on versus how much offense, how much health steal. Uh, speaking of which, you know, we have offense to help counter, you know, counterbalance some of that bulk here added by this set. We have health steal again. Um, you know, immediate early winner is going to be Ray. Uh, there's going to be other teams that will reveal themselves. I know Wampa historically has enjoyed a health steal cron, so there's some synergy to be had there. Uh, a note about accuracy, and Aesop and I talked about this uh, before we started this recording, but we did confirm that accuracy breaks down as special or physical accuracy. Um, so when it's handed out in this way, it applies for both. So this will counter deflection from the previous Datacron set 13. And if they should add dodge on the future set 15, this is this is your chance to protect yourself from that. So consider making two dark side accuracy crons. You might need one or both in a single match where you'd be using Starkiller, Fennec, or Afra. You probably wouldn't need it for all three, so that's why I say probably no more than two if you really wanted to cover yourself. Um, Aesop, did you? Ha I, I know we came up with this together, so I know I'm rattling it off like it's all nope. just from my own genius here. But uh, no, please, any other notes uh, you want to share? The only other with notes folks? is just future proofing, thinking through the health deal for other tunes that like it, like that are in current uh, current sets like LV. LV with health deal is always super annoying. I know right now he's probably going to continue to use an Empire Cron, but when set 13 is gone, he's going to move over to this, and you're going to want to help steal Dark Side Cron. So. You will. That's very true. <clears throat> All right, let's uh, move <laughs> right into alignments. Yeah, I mean, I didn't cover all the different stat amounts, but you can see how it rolls out, folks. You know, you get your minors on 1 and 2, mediums on 4 and 5, majors on 7 8. Okay, alignments. So yeah, um, a high level note, overall, a little less powerful than set 13s, right? Prod up and, and doubt especially, uh, really meta defining. So as long as they're gonna be around, we both agree that you're probably gonna be using these on most teams uh, with, the, with the exceptions that we'll cover here. Uh, dark side winners first. So one, the accuracy up cron, it's gonna be rare that you would need it, but this is again kind of going back to Aesop's future proofing point a moment ago. Um, just consider having one or two of those around for a future dodge set, right? Also consider that you could be fighting teams that, uh, you know, stack evasion. You could gain the fact that they, you know they're going to dodge you and use that to, to make a counter stick. Um, 
offense and speed stacking on death is nice. It's probably going to be your default replacement when doubt expires. So check how many doubts you've got. If you're like most of us, that's a lot of your crons are doubts. So be sure that, you know, if you're not taking them all to, to level 9, have a wide array of level 3s holding that for your Darksider teams. For uh, Wampa, consider uh, a prod up Kron, a prod up dark side, or the potency tenacity. Aesop, I don't know if you wanted to cover your point from earlier, but you had a, a fair point about what, which way you would go about that for Wampa. Yeah, I mean, usually my Wampa is picking up to survive the opening salvo, so it's about sometimes you're trying to kill C, who might be having high tenacity or something, you're not landing that heal immunity, so having a potency up is going to be fantastic. Yeah. If you don't need the tenacity up, but putting the up could be fun. Right. The tenacity up wouldn't matter so much to Wampa, the, probably by that point in the fight, but the potency up could be clutch. So, again, that's like a corner case one. Maybe you just, you know, bring up one of, guys. Uh, and, again, that yeah. would be one to have health steal on, too. I think, uh, was that the way you would go with her? Yeah, it's something like that. Um, mm -hmm. Health, health steal. I think it would be fantastic, obviously, from Wampa. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Probably can ramp enough damage to be fine, but ramping health, health steal would be nice. Right. And the other one we talked about with this too, it could be fun, is like a Fennec, right? Who ramps her offense on tenacity up. And so if there's ways you can find a clever team to dispel your Fennec over and over again and have her just keep popping tenacity up, maybe you can ramp her really fast. I have no idea actually how you mechanically do this, but it sounds fun in theory. So. Yeah, because you're certainly not trying to use one where allies are dying to gain offense. So being able exactly. to to exploit that tenacity up buff to stack her, yeah, I could see that. Um, Lord knows when you're doing Fennec against Lord Vader, it's, it's really usually, if things are going bad, that's like her and one character against the world at the end of that fight. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I could see that being huge. Um, that means Dad Bob Boba's going to get a lot of use with that, though. So that's going to be interesting yeah. to see. Okay. All right. Uh, what else do I have here? No, that was, that was, oh, 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 at least one potency and tenacity for Sidious. This was a good one for Mesop, too. And perhaps one for Night Sisters once doubt expires. Night Sisters with doubt is trivializing Finn and a number of other teams that previously required something, maybe up to a Galactic Legend to be clean for high banners on. Um, so again, you're probably sticking with doubt here un until it's gone. But once it is gone, that, that would be an interesting alignment one for Night Sisters, the potency tenacity. Yep. Um, especially for that Finn's Ori matchup. Anyway. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yep, absolutely. So light side winners. Offense and speed. Uh, for sure, this is going to be what you're going to pivot to. You're going to go away from the set 13 product stuff for the following teams. Ray, Qui-Gon Jinn, Gas. And th this will probably become your default light side level three once the product expires for any other team. Um, like we said for the dark siders, maybe one or two accuracy ups for the sake of a future dodge set, uh, dodge set future proofing yourself, and then potency tenacity up. This is actually great for Finzori and any of the teams where you're actually bothering to stack potency or tenacity on the characters through mods. Like help them out. Why not help them with what you're already trying to have them do? Mm -hmm. And that was uh, my last note on alignments. Did you want to throw in anything on top there, sir? No, I'm just going to highlight a little bit. I think a lot of the alignments will be more useful here, especially going forward when doubt expires. But I think they're more useful than the even the set 13. So it'll be fun to kind of play with these. So Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know we were talking about this. The overall, this set has less powerful um, level threes than set 13 but the sixes and nines are ridiculous and how appropriate oh, yeah. how appropriate that we cover that now we're moving right into factions so top of the heap jedi the jedi winners um when jedi allies have plus 100 percent health they have 100 percent offense otherwise they have 100 percent defense uh, at the start of their turn, if they are buffed, they gain advantage for one turn. Otherwise, they gain tenacity up for two turns. So, literally, this supersedes set 13 for all of your Jedi teams. So, not less than four of these you're going to want. Um, Probably more for three. 
Fair point. Yeah, you can you can divide up your four main Jedi teams into comfortably six decent teams for threes. Um, I like that as a as a fair option. This this prot recovery one is kind of meh. Wouldn't go for it. Um, the cooldown reduction, the fifty percent uh, when you fall under fifty percent health, not that great. Whenever an enemy is defeated by a Jedi ally, that enemy can't be revived. Uh, Aesop and I both agree there's a couple circumstances where you'd be really wanting to have that. Um, he mentioned JMK without Cat. That's a great one. Um, that allows you to make some interesting pivots with Cat while still being able to, you know, have high reliability to, to get through a, a priority target only once. Um, like in the case of something like Kersant, and I don't know what you'd be trying to get away with there, but that would be it. Uh, which is interesting because there's, there's there's some really powerful Jedi level minds that can roll right in. I know. Well, it, we'll, we'll get to play with those Jedi level minds too, but also just think like Tuskins and threes, right? We've got constantly reviving Raider, and you mm -hmm. just take a basic JKR team with no revive, go about your day. Right? Sew it so, up. <clears throat> so so at least one of those is fair. Uh, but yeah, your your hundred percent health and offense is definitely the bread and butter here, and then at least one ability block cron for the rare situation where you want it. So yeah, where is that one? Whenever an ally deals damage to an enemy and no other enemy is ability blocked, inflict ability block for one turn on the target enemy, which can't be evaded or resisted. Next uh, on resistance, so the winners really here. Uh, the plus one resistance allies have plus one hundred tenacity. Resistance allies can't be defeated uh, until each of them has fall, uh, fallen below 100% health once. Um, I could go on about this, but I really want you to share your thoughts with the people there because you have some great thoughts on applications for this. Yeah, it's just going to be a lot of fun with the, again, the level nines will be fun with this in terms of Holdo and Ray and even Finn. And then playing with all the different Zori combinations, even seeing if we can make a JTR team work again. I'm just excited to get to testing with this. I just think there's a ton you can do. Where a lot of those teams, you're you're taking apart, you know, resistance hero Finn or Poe or taking somebody out first, and that's key to the team's success. But now if you can't kill them quickly, you need everybody to get damaged first, all of a sudden, you know, things get complicated. You know, and then those teams get off and running, and then you're dead. So right. I'm excited and, to play with this. And you think about the kind of hideousness that this forces for Ray. You're thinking that you know for each if you don't if the, if you don't create the circumstance where you kill her first, <laughs> then that means each time you're chopping down her allies uh, to try and get through them to satisfy this condition, you're going to be triggering whirlwinds. And God forbid yeah. you should actually kill her allies with the stacking offense and speed level three because that next whirlwind's worse than the last. Yeah. Exactly. So I can see that. Well, that's that's a bad bit of business. Hey, we're we're gonna be dusting off some some resistance to make some full resistance team. It's gonna be fun. Yes, 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 yes. Um, the crit avoidance and crit chance one, uh, you know, it looks kind of impressive. Whenever an ally is critically hit, they gain a hundred percent CA and a hundred percent crit chance for two turns. I haven't had the chance to test this yet. I don't I don't have one of these yet, so I don't know. I, I would expect that this is applied as a buff. If it's not applied as a buff, it, it could be interesting. But if it is applied as a buff, that's pretty mediocre. And we've seen things like Ahsoka handle that easily before, right? Like with GK on the team, the dispel goes down first. You do your critical hit. It triggers a new crit, uh, crit immunity to come back up. Like, you know, we know... We'll see. We'll see how it is. We'll see how it uh, how it's implemented. Um, you also, I, I think you had an interesting note. I wasn't really going to mention it, but the stacking offense one, whenever a debuff on an enemy expires, allies gain 2% offense, doubled if the debuff was dispelled until the end of battle. So if this was going to get run with Ray, it would be in lieu of the 100% tenacity, which I think we both agree the tenacity and the revival or the, you know, the anti-defeat mm -hmm. thing is gen uh, generically stronger, but... You had a you had an interesting point, and I think it like it encourages a resistance super comp um, yeah. to to do it. But I think there's an interesting gambit there. Did you want to say your piece on that? Well, it's just like so. This is not 
you need a resistance person, right? So if you're gonna, my only thing with this too is around if you're gonna run a raid team and they have all resistance on it, and you split your resistance off in other teams, right? And then you're running a raid team with a bunch of debuffers, like you know, Cal, OG Cal, and so he does his, you know, ability blocks and all that stuff gets out there and it gets cleansed. All of a sudden, you have your stacking Ray with stacking offense or something else. You run it with a bam, like a bam or dash or something like that, spamming debuff. You can try to see if you can ramp your ray really fast. Um, there's just interesting things to play with there that I was that I was contemplating that you you don't need a whole if you don't have a whole resistance team then maybe the getting all your resistance under 100 percent won't matter as much, mm -hmm. right? Because if you're running just ray, ray's just going to lifeblood all of a sudden she's under 100 percent health and that level six is and, and null and void, right? Yeah, I, I think that's and I think that's a really interesting thought because the the meta's favored Ray having you know, always having high offense, but like the, the mm -hmm. tilt has been towards health for some time just because of synergy even from before prod up. Uh, yeah. set thirteen. You had the bulk, so why wouldn't you lean into more health to get more health? Um, mm -hmm. this could be uh, a momentum shift where you can, you know, a lot of people consider like a high amount of offense for her, very high to be like 13k. Um, mm -hmm. you could be using that as just the bot, and that's with making some health sacrifices, right? You could have yeah. that be the bottommost floor of this team, have stacking offense from this level six, let them kill any of your allies, let them take you below 90% health, see what happens. Like, I see yeah. the application. It's a, it's a cool thought. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you think about it too, you can put offense in the Kron, right? So if you get, like, you just go all offense in your Kron, add another 50% offense to your 13K ray, right? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And then all of a sudden, it's just holy crap. Right. It gets out of hand. It, oh. it, it's like oh, yeah. it, so quickly it would get out of hand. All right, let's move to Separatist. Uh, this one, not not too many notes here. Um, the Extortion Cron here. So Separatist allies are immune to days. Enemies with Extortion have minus 100% crit chance and potency. Whenever non-droid Separatist allies use a special ability on their turn, they gain repost for one turn. So this is going to be for your Trench Cron. Um... You know, you probably only need one of this, I would say. Uh, the target lock and crit damage stacking. So this next one here. At the start of each Separatist ally's turn, inflict target lock on a random enemy that doesn't already have it for one turn, which can't be resisted. Whenever a Separatist ally gains bonus turn meter when they didn't have 100% turn meter, gain 3% crit damage stacking for the rest of the encounter. If the target enemy is target locked, when, uh, whenever Separatist allies use a special ability, they gain 3% max health stacking for the rest of the encounter. This is insane when you think about how this is meant to be working with Stap and about how Stap uh, gives max health to the team. So Grievous approaches just absurd amounts of damage much earlier than in the fight than you would otherwise expect. So this is perhaps meant to give GG Stap actual defensive viability. Because I don't know that you need all this to make him awesome on offense. Um, but people will certainly be testing because that crit damage with the higher health ramp, that's that's going to enable some stuff you weren't doing before. I'm sure of that. Uh, last note is consider an ability block Kron for threes. So, yeah, whenever a Separatist ally uh, deals damage to an enemy and no other enemy is uh, ability blocked, inflict ability block for... What is it? Um, bu -bu bum... Where is it? I can't see it. Blind. Oh, it is just, it's just blind. It is an ability block. Eh, maybe one. You never know. The point is it was to have a third Separatist crown for the sake of threes because you could feasibly make three Separatist teams. So it's an option for you. Uh, about yeah. the, yeah, did you have anything else on the Separatist? No, you could definitely, I mean, again, for threes, I'm thinking, like, you can end up with a new team, you could end up with, you know, a GG, that B1 team, or something, something like that, and then obviously a trench team, so, you can definitely, in threes, you're going to want a couple separate scrum, so. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, last but never least, the Sith. 
Guys, this first one is cracked. At the start of their turn, Sith allies can ignore taunt to target a debuffed enemy. When and that's going to be most, if not always, of the time, especially when you have like corrupted battle meditation and stuff like that out there. Whenever a Sith ally inflicts a debuff on an enemy, they also deal five percent max health damage to that enemy, which can't be evaded. This damage can't defeat enemies. So this is uh, one of those where, especially, um, I, I think this actually would supersede Doubt for the following teams. Like, I think you're going to want this for Bane, Treya, Malgus, DR, if you split DR away from Malgus, whether that's in fives or especially in threes, and of course the Darth Sidious Kron. It might be okay for for Sith Eternal. Um it's not usually a problem for him to be stuck behind one taunt, but if you wanted the discretion to ignore whatever pre-taunts on the enemy team and link up both priority targets off rip, you could use it there. Um, well, you still you got to get a debuff on them. That's the thing, though. That's the, I don't if they don't proc the whatever the condition, yeah, for the, that. The, then yeah. But I can't remember the Sidious thing. Right, and Sidious won't do that by himself. So to your point, yeah, you need allies there. So that's why Aesop and I were talking, and, and we thought that, you know, Tenacity Up, the Tenacity Up Cron would be probably your best choice for C set. Um, note that, and this is a great observation by you uh, about this one. Where is it? Whenever allies deal damage uh, to all enemies with an ability, they grant Tenacity Up for two turns to all allies. So you need somebody that has an AoE effect that is actually capable of hitting all enemies. It can't be something where it hits one enemy and another, right? It can't be a forking ability that hits two. It has to be capable of hitting everything. So sets like your easy candidate for that. Um, otherwise, yeah, it wouldn't much matter which way you would go with Sith Eternal. Any other note on these Sith guys, Asam? Oh, I mean, I think it, those are these are ones that are going to be a lot of fun. Like especially the city's Gron. That's just, I, I've made mine already and been testing, and it's awesome. <laughs> I bet. I bet. Yeah, I just, that's insane. Just to pick whoever you want to go after with Sidious. Yeah. Well, it's also his countering. I believe his counters don't counter into the tank. They'll counter into whoever hits if they have a diva. Very nice. Call. So it's just it's sick. Okay. Um, let's get right into it. This is this is the. This is the most fun. Um, like we said, you know, the threes are kind of whatever on this set. The sixes are fun. The nines are crazy. And so many yeah. of these nines are very highly desirable. So we'll, we'll get right into it. First, Keller and Beck. Uh, we're just going to cover the ones uh, that Aesop and I mutually agreed before uh, the recording here. These are the ones that, that are worth taking. So if we don't mention it, we just don't think it's really worth your time. Uh, Keller and Beck. Keller and Beck has plus 100,000 max prot. When, uh, whenever Keller and Beck uses a basic ability, he deals additional true damage equal to 5% of his max protection, which can't be evaded. If there are no Galactic Legend allies at the start of his turn, all other Galactic Republic Jedi gain 10 stacks, max 100, of Padawan Lessons. What do you got to say about this one, man? <laughs> I, I mean, I'm so excited to play with this in TW. Obviously, the TW Omicron is just going to be stupid. So, I mean, eh, it's going to be fun. We're going to see. This is going to be horrific in threes. <laughs> and, and people who put the effort into having him in, in very fast prop primaries are just going to get paid out by this. It's a good one. Silly. Absolutely silly. All right, next, next on deck is Kit Fisto. His time has come. They laughed at me. They laughed at me years ago when I made him Relic 7 and started making use of him in Qui-Gon. But now his hour has come. Kit Fisto has plus 100% health steal. At the start of the battle, grant guard to all other Galactic Republic Jedi allies until Kit Fisto is defeated. Kit Fisto and all allies with guard have plus 100% accuracy and have their health and protection equalized at the start of each ally's turn. Whenever Kit Fisto attacks out of turn, he recovers 20% health and protection and lowers the cooldown of turn, uh, turn the Tide, his AoE physical damage, by one. 
Whenever Kit Fisto uses a special ability, uh, all Galactic Republic Jedi gain retribution for two turns, and whenever he uses basic ability, dispel all buffs on the target enemy. They've made, they've, they functionally like reworked his kit and just decided to call it a Datacron here. Mm -hmm. He has his kit reworked for four months. So. It's, it's about time. The man actually needs some permanent love because this, this is, this feels yeah. great. So, so this is um, this is the one that you would be running with your Qui Gon team, yeah. right? You'd want to lean into maybe, yeah, maybe. I have dreams of trying this with like uh, JMK, right? Because think of the retribution for JMK. Yeah. You're gonna get all stats. Like, there's so much Powerful. fun stuff that can come with this. I know you lose the the CM game of his basic or whatever, but you know, it, it, I don't know. There's there's tons of options, right? Like yeah, fun. yeah. I mean, the dispel alone, Lord knows you don't you don't. Uh, <laughs> You, you don't you don't wish you had less Jedi that could dispel on basic. Say that. All right, uh, Jedi Knight Cal Kestis, of course. The first time uh, he falls below thirty percent health, he dispels all debuffs on himself, recovers forty percent health, and gains a bonus turn. This is just your safety valve, folks. Um, you hopefully probably won't need to proc this too much, but if the circumstance transpires that you're using this against Malgus and he goes for the grand dunk, unless. Um, Unless it just outright one shots you, you're gonna make it. Anything you wanted to throw on that one? No, I mean I, I think it's Street good forward. to have him do this cron to go with JML or whatever the JML teams you want to be doing. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Also in threes, you know, the Basti, Mace, you know, Jedi Knight Cal versus Malgus, you know, might still work now even with the Sith Malgus cron or Dow cron. So. For sure. And I mean, I know that that AI likes to go for him over Bastos. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, okay, Ki Adi Mundi. Uh, this one we actually skipped, so no, that one isn't any good. Mace Windu is also kind of underwhelming. Okay, Amalyn Holdo. Man, all right, I'll just read this, but then the, <laughs> the, the word on this is all ASAPs. Amalyn Holdo has plus 100% max health and max protection. At the start of the encounter, all resistance allies and Ben Solo gain foresight for one turn. Whenever Amalyn Holdo loses taunt, all other resistance allies and Ben Solo gain foresight for one turn. Whenever a resistance ally or Ben Solo loses foresight, she gains 100% bonus protection, stacking for one turn. Um... So think about that. I mean, like per each, she could gain a hundred percent. So up to five, up to four hundred percent. Well, actually, resistance ally. So not other resistance uh -huh. ally. Up to five hundred percent protection up yeah. stacking. That's crazy. While she mm -hmm. has taunt, all other resistant allies and Ben Solo have plus one hundred percent critical avoidance and defense penetration and one hundred uh, plus one hundred speed. Now that's not a buff. That's just a mechanic add on into the stats. So, wow. Okay, so Aesop, just, I, I know you, you're you just in love with this one. Go on. Yeah, I just made this one the other day, and it, it's fun. <laughs> um, you do silly things with Finn and JTR and Ray and a bunch of resistance, and just, she gets crazy thick, and they get super annoying to kill, and I'm just having fun in Arena wrecking other meta teams with different stuff, so... I highly recommend this. This is my second favorite level nine of the level nine. Set. Yeah, we're getting we're getting to the good one. We're getting down there. All right, uh, BB eight we thought was kind of eh. Um, Finn is is kind of interesting. Whenever an ally uses an ability on their turn, he assists, limiting uh, once per turn, dealing fifty percent more damage. So you know, before we were recording, I was saying to Aesop, I guess if you if you wanted to lean into this. I guess you'd have to mod him more offensively. I've been running mine in defense and health for a long time. He's like, I've been having mine in offense. I'm like, okay, well, I better look at that. Then. <laughs> better lean into that because uh, that can That's be significant. Yeah, that team takes so many turns, so that that could be a cracked amount of damage over, you know, just a few just a few turns. Um, all right, next one, Ray. The first time she is defeated, she's revived with 100% health, gains prod up over time 75% for two turns, and takes a bonus turn. Um, the note on this one is it's and maybe. Right now, uh, it seems like Holdo is doing more impressive things for the Ray team than the Ray Kron. It's a maybe. If you happen to get one, you know, maybe sit on it if you don't immediately need to, like, re-roll that level 9 away. But 
it seems like it's the inferior choice to hold us. So the question is, is, is there some great division of resources to be had, like in particularly for threes? Um, you know, having Holdo partitioned away from Ray? I don't know, but it, it, that was the only comment really to mention about the Ray crumb. All right, uh, Stap, obviously. Whenever another Separatist ally uses an ability against an enemy with target lock, Stap assists. And remember, we talked about that target lock and crit damage stacking level three earlier. So, uh, no, level six, and that's gonna right. be yeah. that's gonna be crazy. So yeah, Stap will assist once per turn. Uh, whenever Stap uses a basic ability against a pinned enemy, gain two stacks of overcharge, stacking max five at the end of turn. And whenever Stap loses a stack of overcharge, Stap gains 10% turn meter. So this is just gonna enable crazy moves out of this team. They're gonna be flying and it's gonna be huge damage way early in the fight. Um, I wanna see, I think this is just gonna just devour gas. Like, I've been eating up gas a little bit this season with GG stat. Um, there's some element of risk to it, but I feel like this is going to take a lot of that out. Yeah. Uh, once again, we see Admiral Trench back in the fray. He's level 9. Non-droid Separatist allies start the encounter with Tactical Supremacy for two turns. Whenever Separatist allies gain a stack of heal over time, they gain 5% crit chance, stacking up to 200% for the rest of the encounter. Whenever allies gain a stack of prod up, oh, uh, protection over time, sorry, they gain 5% defense, stacking max 200% for the rest of the encounter. And whenever uh, Admiral Trench uses his basic ability on his turn, call all allies with repost to assist. Whenever Trench shocks an enemy, he gains prod up 25% for one turn, so... It's good. Um, some of us have been getting good results with Trench on defense without this Kron because of Doubt. Doubt's made it so that it isn't just free food for CLS. Um, but he's going to be real serious business once again with this one back in the fray. I look forward to having it back. Any Anything you wanted to add on him there? No, the only other thing is that the... Um, yeah. I'm going to scroll back to the notes, but there wasn't there a level six for separatist that put repose, uh, repose on everybody. And yes. So it could be a good combination with the trench one. And there, there's something that could be built off that too. Again, I still think doubt runs supreme right now, even for the separatists in a lot of cases, but and especially when that chronic doubt's gone, this will definitely be the optimum set. Well, you're absolutely right. That that was level six. Um, whenever non-droid separatist allies use a special ability on their turn, they gain repose for one turn. So, mm -hmm. so then you're just, with that trench level nine, it could be, could be really good. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, okay, yeah, the Count Dooku, underwhelming because you would be having him with trench, so we skip that. Spy, whenever he attacks out of turn, you know, he recovers 20% health to protection. If you run into it, use it for your geos, where you use your geos, but I wouldn't make any special effort. Now, back to the fun ones. Uh, Darth Bane. At the start of Darth Bane's turn, all enemies gain accuracy up, advantage, and health steal up for one turn or until they receive damage and summon a Sith Trooper in the ally slot if it is available and there are no other Sith Trooper allies. Darth Bane gains a stack of Siphon whenever he's critically hit, whenever Darth Bane uses Essence of Dominance, also Siphon crit damage. Deceived enemies deal 25% reduced damage to Darth Bane. So, so far this season, most of us have been using Bane away from Sith Eternal because you're able to just use something like Bane and uh, Relic 9 Sass to just stomp Reva, Leia, a whole bunch of other things. Um, we're, they're further offering you bait, incentive, to link up with Sith Eternal and see what you can cut through because, um, yeah, that, that's powerful. And this, this effect would be engaged. Um, I don't think the effect would stop when Bane dies because it's not related to that. Yeah. So that's, that's powerful if, if it ends up just being your boy. Uh, anything you yeah. wanted to cover about this, please? Yeah, I just, I, again, I'm not as excited about it because just because Bane is just already so good. Yeah. Um, 
it is I'm still even though they want me to, I'm still probably not gonna use them with C. I'm going to mm-hmm. find ways to allocate those resources better. Mm-hmm. I think with the other Sith crons, even with the uh, Doubt Cron now, like being with like a huge health pool, like you put like, you know, you can get up to like hundred percent health Cron, right? Put hundred percent health on Bane, just let him go nuts, like he's gonna be sick. Like he doesn't need level nine D C, I don't know. So Agreed. It's more of like he's just already so badass. It's just it's not, if it wasn't like if he had like a bonus turn every time an enemy took a turn or something silly like that, you know. But sort of that, he's already just ridiculous. So. Yeah, yeah, I agree. All right. Um, last but not least, Darth Sidious. Okay, at last we finally get Clone Wars uh, Sidious from the cartoon. Oh. If there are no other active allies at the start of battle. Darth Sidious gains 200% defense, health steal, max health, and max protection, plus 100% <clears throat> counter chance and crit chance, and plus 100 speed. He is immune to daze and stun. At the start of his turn, dispel all debuffs on himself and reset all cooldowns. Whenever he uses basic ability, inflict a stack of damage over time for one turn, which can't be resisted. And whenever he uses a special ability, dispel all buffs on all enemies. <laughs> enemies can't assist or attack again if he is targeted. Uh, he's stealing that from Darth Revan there. Uh, at the start of each enemy's turn, if they have five stacks of damage over time, they are instantly defeated. And whenever an enemy is de- an enemy is defeated, he recovers one hundred percent health and protection. Sound off, Aesop. What you got it, to say? This is the well, I, mean, I made this cron, and I have have so much fun. Like, his cron is great. There are certain things that shut him down that I found, you know, that are problems for him. But short of that, like you can do amazing things, and I just can't imagine the power of this. Is like a wampa in like every game mode now. He's like you know turned into this like super wampa that can go into like all different game modes, not just confined to Gak. And it's awesome. It, and, it feels yeah. almost like a second Darth Bane, like not anywhere yeah. near as like AOE powerful, but like damn, mm-hmm. like just picking something apart. So that that's yeah. crazy. That's fun. And I it, and I know you. I don't usually think in terms of TW, but yeah, man. I know. I know. <laughs> I said Kron, he's gonna be ridiculous. I'm, I'm excited. Oh yeah. So. All right. Well, that that actually brings us to the end of the kit. Um. I I'm not great at infographics, guys. I'll I'll I gotta get with uh, somebody volunteering here in the in the community to maybe help me put together graphics to give you guys. But what I will give you uh, in the comments of this video are all my notes. You can have them at a glance for yourself as you start your farming here, uh, going in on this new set 14. Uh, Aesop, thank you so much for making the time to make this video. It's a real pleasure to have you. Uh, and again, you know, appreciate you just you know wrangling the clock to to make this work. Oh, it's fun. Always a good time to talk about things. Helps me dig into all the stuff I need to get get ready for and start preparing to farm. So fantastic. Thank you. All right. Uh, for all you seeing this here on YouTube, uh, all my general YouTube audience will see this uh, later in the week. I'd say about Thursday. Thursday is when you can expect to see this for all my patrons. This should be available tonight or early in the morning, depending on how slowly the VOD uploads. Um, but if you want to find out when I'm streaming, I stream live on Twitch, uh, twitch.tv forward slash Tassinix. All my links are here in the YouTube channel, so you'll be able to get at me. My Discord link's there, so if you want to be in touch, that's the place. And, uh, yeah, of course, if you love what I'm doing here and you want to support the stream, support, uh, you know, the continued, uh, growth of my account so I can push up against these monsters up at the top, including Aesop himself, uh, consider checking out patreon.com forward slash Tacitix. Hold on, let me put the correct page up there. There you go. So, yeah, you know, uh, got something there for any upwardly mobile GAC player. Uh, you can join the community for five bucks, get the early access to my YouTube content, support what I do, be, you know, in the chat, in voice with me all day, every day. I'm most of the, most of the time I'm lurking in there. So get at me. But you also have the $10 and $15 bundles, which allow you to get at the Omega Bot and uh, Hot Utils um, Patreon bundle premium. So, you know, it'll save you money if you're already using those. 
but getting the enhanced scouting power of Omega Bot and the mod and loadout management features of Hot Utils, great for any player. Gotta thank the patrons themselves that make all of this possible. A shout out at VIP access goes to White Wolf, Sam Vimes, Jobin4527, Stark Strategy Gamer, Rene Bebe, Deadpool Cow28, Johnny B. Ottawa, JJ's Productions Twitch, Sweens14, Darth QPPMG, Ray's Malbus, and Brock Thud Steel. At VIP Access Plus, taking advantage of that Omega Bot bundle is Trevor Boy Gaming, Striker, and Eshsat Nautikin. Thank you guys so much for signing up. At VIP Access Premium, getting the Omega Bot and the Hot Utils bundle uh, is Quig and Ibanek. Appreciate you guys so much for joining this new tier. And at the top of the list, there is no substitute for Nomad's Reaper. Uh, just by far the most generous and extremely awesome uh, patron anyone could ever ask for. Be uh, beat the brakes off some hype trains for me this season here. Just set new records. Uh, always been an extraordinary supporter, so can't say enough good about you, man. Thank you so much. All right, let's head over to the special thanks here. Got to cover Yoda Force, my guild master in my former guild, uh, Vanguard. He was one of my earliest supporters. Bought me the mic I'm speaking to you on right now. He's long since quit the game, but we remember him fondly from the other side. Wish you well, man. To Mrs. T, my wife, thank you for wrangling my, uh, you know, our daughter here in the background who desperately wants Daddy to write out the full alphabet, um, you know, 20 times a day to, to drill her letters and numbers, which is fantastic for Dad to do for any time that he's not recording a video or streaming. So appreciate you. Uh, and then, of course, Dagger, TJ, and Sasha Isha, my co-hosts on my uh, GAC-focused podcast, Plotting and Scheming, which you can also find on YouTube. Uh, these gentlemen take time out of their busy, you know, work and family schedules to make our show. Love what we're doing together. Uh, really appreciate you guys, and it wouldn't be the same without you. All right, let's uh, head on back over here and just say, you know, uh, good luck to you all going into this first conquest. Our, our unit we're going for is this Queen Amidala, who's going to be ridiculous. But uh, there's so much to look forward to here. In, in this new set for threes, and uh, when we come back to fives, it's just going to be more madness about what you can 2v5. Um, last notes to you, Aesop. Anything you wanted to say before we close the door? No, I think you nailed it. I think we're good to go. I'm excited for threes with the fun stuff. So. All right. Let's see how it goes. Yes, let's get them. All right. Well, all right, folks. Uh, see you again real soon here out on the hollow tables. But until then... It's been real, it's been awesome, it's been real awesome. Take care.